Troy Mullins hits the golf ball a long way. All long drivers of the game share a few things in common with each other and in today's episode we will diagnose her swing and see how she does it. Maybe you can take some of it to your swing but beware only select body types can accomplish what she does. So without further ado let's see the raw power of Troy Mullins. Ladies and gentlemen of the Lion Golf Academy, welcome back and let's get straight into this Troy Mullins. And we're going to point out these few things to show you why this swing works. Some things I would not recommend doing is swinging like her because you'll probably break your back. The swing is reserved for only a few people and let's look at that left side of the screen. We see a great setup and as usual we always see this 90 degree angle between the spine angle and the lower plane line with the driver so keep that in mind get your setup as close to 90 degrees and you should be in a much better position on the right side of the screen we see the head the hands and the ball position are not in line so this is one of those things that she's been working on i've seen some later videos where it has been kind of squared away and she's hitting the ball a little bit better but i chose this to show you why she does this so essentially she is getting some four press action going here by keeping the hands ahead of the golf club in relation to her center. So her center of her chest is right about here and you would want your hands to meet that center of the chest and your club had to meet that center of the chest and you can see her ball position is in essence about five or six inches behind the center of her chest. What that does is it de loss the club and to offset that we have a very strong grip and to offset that you need a lot of tilt and turn. So you see this with a lot of long drive competitors, people that hit the ball a long way, they have a very strong grip. Why? Because you need more tilt and turn to hold off that release. People with weak grips usually have overactive hands and arms and reduced turn and tilt. So check your grip and see what ball flight you're having issues with and it might be the grip. Let's take a look as we take that club back. What we're going to do is leave everything right here on the right side of the screen. Let's go on the left side. We're going to just take that club to about that midway point when the club is at parallel. And we can see, look at that. There goes that disappearing act. I always talk about that club head hides the hands. We got that nice one piece takeaway. We can see her triangle is still set to her center of her chest. So this is just a one piece turn increasing the width and also stability she hasn't lost any of her posture right side of the screen let's take this back to the same position where club is parallel to the ground what we can see again where is that triangle still connected to her center of her chest not much has changed she's just turned around the center she has stayed in her spine angle and she's just rotating around that right hip joint we don't see any lateral shift Left side of the screen let's take it back a little bit further we can see that club is tracing that bottom plane line and she will eventually work her arms up as she keeps turning now her turn radius is what you'll see in the front view as she keeps turning she reaches that secondary plane line perfectly her club head however you can see is slightly closed and that all has to do with her grip position and the way she set up to the golf ball her full back swing gets to about here now we lose traction of that club head we can just see a little bit peeking out there but it's hard to tell where that club face position is but look at her upper plane line it's perfect she's still in her spine angle line she hasn't shifted back or forward which means her weighting on her feet is fairly centered. Right side of the screen, let's take this back further and we can see that nice turn. This is where most of us have our turn width, anywhere around 90, maybe past 90, but let's see how much more she can take back. So she keeps rotating, keeps rotating, keeps rotating, keeps rotating. That's an immense shoulder turn. Now we can see that club head is still closed to her spine angle. Now that again has to do with that grip and it's very important that this swing works around the grip and most swings do work around the grip because club face is king, club face decides everything of the golf swing and how your body interacts with that club face is very important. So we can see on the right side of the screen she's still maintaining her spine angle, she's just turned around her right hip, massive massive shoulder turn with a reduced hip turn. She probably has almost 140 degrees of shoulder rotation with about 45 degrees of hip turn so that puts her at around 100 degrees of X factor. Now X factor is a huge number to figure out because that shows you how much you are storing with your potential energy coming through the golf ball as you unwind and boy does she unwind. Another thing you see here is that club shaft might be past parallel but in relation to her shoulder turn 
It's not even close to forming that T. And this is a big eye opener for everyone. When you hear all those myths out there saying, get your club to parallel, don't listen to that because it's all about how much you rotate your shoulders. Because if your shoulders don't rotate enough and you get the club to parallel, you are disconnecting from your power source. And then you have to reconnect with hands and arms, giving you a flipping motion and impact, chicken wings, reduced turn, and in decrease of yardages. Okay, so now we are ready. We're still in our spine angle. We are rotated. We are staying connected. We are grounded. Let's see this unwinding going on. And what we'll see is ground up for her. So she really starts with those hips and the lower body. Hips are firing. She is jumping up with her feet. You can see her legs jumping up. But what you'll notice is she has to tilt a lot to get that club down to that plane. So already you can see it is parallel to that lower plane line and it did so very quickly because of increased right shoulder tilt down. As a result for that, she is standing up with the lower body, right shoulder is tilting down, so she has to create some room. She loses a little bit of a posture. That's where her new back brace line is and her new spine angle line you can see it's starting to stand up. Right side of the screen, let's take a look here. There goes that lower body to upper. So remember how you drive the energy. First, you have to store the energy with a great X factor. Then you have to deliver it correctly. So from ground up is what you're thinking about. You can see the left knee gets going and the left hip at the same time. She is tilting under, just like we saw on the other side. So look at that increased right shoulder tilt to get that club to drop down to that lower plane line that quickly. The quicker you can get that club to drop to the lower plane line without going under it, now you're now you're in the ballpark because from that position, as soon as you drop it in that slot on the lower plane line, then you just turn and drive up into it. We can see on the right side of the screen, her head has stayed neutral. She is definitely driving with the lower hips and you can see her new spine angle is starting to tip back. Now, this is important to strike up on the golf ball, but the issue with her is her golf ball should be right here, but since it's back there and she hasn't manipulated her body, she has to do something and she does something very well we'll see it pretty soon left side of the screen back towards impact that club head rides down that lower plane line it tips slightly below it because of that momentum of a right shoulder dipping and that momentum of the club head is going to fall below the plane line but this is by design because of where she put that ball position and also her strong grip so we're going to keep on going down to impact you can see she's completely come out of her posture which is unusual you can see that's her new spine angle but that's partly due to her pushing up with her legs and you can see all of her weight goes towards her toes. Let's go down to the right side of the screen now. As we come on through, we can see what's very impressive here is because of that right shoulder tilt, this puts her elbow out in front of an elite position. So this is more than Hogan. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen somebody this extreme for quite some time, but that just shows you how much power she has just stored up already she hasn't lost any angle as she's in this position where most of us amateur golfers we're already out over here already starting to look like kfc's next menu item and as we keep on going down we can see that transfer of energy right about here so She's starting to lose a little bit of a, that angle. That's because that ball position is a little bit too far back. If that ball position was where she should have had it, she could hold that angle a little bit longer. But this is one of the reasons why she has to stand up and come out of her posture to create the room for this tiny early release to get that golf ball. And we can see it on the left side here. We're seeing that standing up to create some of that room. We keep on going down to impact. Past impact, we can see the right shoulder is definitely tilting down an extreme amount. We can still see a lot of spacing between the right forearm and the left forearm and that is because her hands are going straight up and out away from her and this is one of those reasons why she has a strong grip to hold that release because if she is releasing at any point in time now that ball is going to rope hook or she might even top the ball on the right side of the screen we can see a little bit more of this action here we see that strong grip all the way down through impact. We can see the top of her left hand. She's holding onto that release, holding onto that release. Right shoulder tilt, that's an immense amount of tilt. New spine angle down to here. So that was her original spine angle. That's her impact spine angle. So a lot of rocking going on. And if you would imagine if the golf ball was where it should have been, she would not have to manipulate her right shoulder as much. But I think this is the reason why she hits it so far because of that manipulation. So this is one of those good cases where a setup flaw actually developed her swing. If she had a perfect setup, her swing might not be as powerful as this one because this one evolved from that setup. Setup, which the grip is a major part of, helps create your golf swing. The golf swing provides club face at impact. 
So you can see the direct relation between grip and club face at impact. And it's all how your body is formed and designed. Now she has a perfect body to do this because it is very flexible, extremely strong, and she can do this. I would never teach anybody a strong grip with a centered ball placement unless they can do this with their body. Let's keep on going. Left side of the screen, we can see her right hand kind of moving away from her. Now, this is where we see a lot of rotation to catch up. You can see that she's completely lost her spine angle. So she's standing completely up versus where she was not when she started out with. And once we go through, we can see that rotation. So now the rotation plays catch up because the body is now turning to absorb the tilt. So the tilting had to occur early because of that grip and the ball position. Now, if she kept tilting, she would break her back. So this is where the turning has to take over to absorb the tilt. And we can see a great job turning through because look at all that turn all of a sudden. The right arm is back up in that top plane line. Complete loss of posture though, and also very close to her toes, but that's where she gets her power from. And when she comes all the way around, and where does she finish? Now she finishes back in her spine angle. So you see how she went up and then back down because the turn took over the tilt. And let's go to the right side of the screen as you come through. We see that holding of the release. Now comes the turn. Let's see that turn occur. There's the turn. Now the turn has to be there to absorb that extra tilting. Look at the connection here. This is fantastic. So probably one of the best post connections I've seen. Hands are right in line with the center of the chest and they don't break for quite some time. We can see here they are still center of the chest so this is a huge amount of power that she is destroying that golf ball with every single time she swings the golf club so look at that left knee i don't know about you but this looks pretty painful to me but look at that i mean that is a sign of somebody with some superpowers so clearly some double jointedness going on here where most of us if we do this i mean if i'm in that position i need to go see a doctor pretty quickly but this just shows you that it takes a certain body type to do this. This is not a swing that 99.9% .9 of us can go out and try. So for your swing, make sure you check your grip, check your posture, check your alignment, check your balance. Once you are there, everything should be neutralized when you set up. If you don't have a neutralized setup to start with, go see a golf coach, go see a PJ, LPGA professional to help you out to recognize what causes what. And you'll find out that if you have played this game for quite some time and you have a weak setup, your swing has evolved to correct that weak setup and they play hand in hand. So you can't cure one without the other. So if you cure your setup, guess what happens to your swing? It falls apart. So you have to go make sure you work with somebody that understands a change in the setup we also have to change a full swing motion to accompany that change. So it's a long process. There is no quick fixes in golf. Don't fall for it. I hope this helps you. Fairways and greens. Yeah.